Okay, so now let's do some work on the middle heater. Between the upper heater and the middle heater, we have a very important anatomical structure, which is the diaphragm. The diaphragm can often be a place where we hold emotions and where there's a lot of tension, and that can affect the breathing, obviously, but it can also affect the whole energetic flow within the body. So, let's have a look at some techniques for releasing the diaphragm. Most commonly, it's the triple heater and the liver and gallbladder that directly affect the tension in the diaphragm. And we can find out which is the most important by using a resonance palpation technique. Okay, so now Nicole's pretty relaxed, but she has got a little bit of tension here around the diaphragm. So let's see if we can figure out whether it's more related to the triple heater or the liver and gallbladder. So what I'm going to do here is place my hand around the diaphragm, around her diaphragm here. I'm tuning into this whole feeling here. And I'm going to just test by palpating the gallbladder, liver, and then the triple heater. Okay. So the strongest resonance I'm getting here is with the liver meridian, which means that we can probably use points on the gallbladder meridian and the liver meridian to help release the cause diaphragm. What I normally would do is I'd normally work locally around the whole diaphragm area just to get a feel of what's happening. This is a bit like ampuka therapy. And then by placing my mother hand over the whole diaphragm area, I can then experiment with techniques on the liver, gallbladder and the triple heater meridian and see if we can find anything that will help release this area. Okay, so we already know that the liver and gallbladder are most likely to work the best for Nicole, but let's just check out the triple heater here. So I'm using Masanaga's triple heater extension. And what I'm doing is selecting supers that I can feel upon palpation, this one just around here, that <coughs> I can feel in the mother hand will release the whole diaphragm. Okay, and I can integrate this as part of my treatment. So having worked the triple heater meridian, we can now work gallbladder. We can use specific points such as gallbladder 34. All the time I'm tuning into the mother hand, to my mother hand here, assessing the effects of the supos. already feel this is the one that's giving the most release here. Okay, so here's another couple of things to look out for when we're working the middle heater. Once we've released the diaphragm and we've got the liver meridian 
and gallbladder meridian flowing smoothly. As part of this whole area, we're looking for the stomach area of the Hara to be relaxed and for the spleen meridian to be stable and strong because this represents the earth, uh, earth relationship with the middle heater. Okay? So when we're working the meridians in the leg, whether we're working the spleen or the stomach, we can get direct feedback from the Hara and assess the effects of the supos exactly the same way we've done with the other meridians. So for example, the stomach meridian doing here is I'm finding supos that help the stomach area of the hara relax. Okay, for example, there's one just here. Same thing with the spleen meridian, placing it in the spleen stretch, holding our mother hand on the spleen diagnostic area, and this time again we're looking for subos that help make this area feel more stable and stronger. keep working in that way until we feel happy that we've done everything we can for the middle heater. And what we're looking for at the end is a relaxed diaphragm, a free flowing of energy, particularly in the liver and gallbladder, a relaxed feeling in the stomach, and a nice stable feeling in the centre of the hara. And that would be a really good treatment for the middle heater.